Thanks guys for uh, coming down. Really appreciate the opportunity from BTAS to be here and share the game. Uh, my role right now is assistant coach with the Jack Jumpers, but my background is junior development when I was in Victoria. I coached under eights, under tens, under twelves, boys, girls, high school, all of the above. So um, whatever seat you've sat in, I've probably been there at some point and battled, you know, nobody showing up to practice, no court space, limited time, all of the above. Uh, and it's a huge part of, you know, our level if junior coaches weren't developing and putting time into young people, you know, there'd be nobody out on uh, the Silver Dome on a Friday night playing for the Jack Jumpers. So really appreciate you giving up your time. Nick asked me to talk about a few things today. The first one I'm going to talk about is one-on-one -on -one play. Uh, so I think the beauty of COVID, at least where I was, was, you know, we only had some limited time outside and when that was available, you'd walk outside and you see kids playing in the park. You know, meeting up, playing outside, playing pickup, and with the limited availability of court space, you know, that just, it just doesn't happen. You get your 60 minutes on the floor, you gotta get off, the next team's in, and suddenly kids, you know, they don't really play one-on-one -on -one anymore. Um, so how can we create spaces in our practice where we can get that done? And to me, there's three things uh, we want to develop in individuals. And the first one is competitiveness. The second one is confidence. And the third one is love of the game. And I think about Jack McVeigh in our team. He's a 6'7 power forward. He's a terrible athlete. Danian would beat him down the floor. Uh, but <laughs> he's incredibly competitive. He would, he would play all day. He would play against his brother until the cows come home. He is extremely confident. He believes in himself and he loves the game. And if we can get those three things done uh, within our practice environment, then we're setting young men and women up to be really good individuals, but also play the game for a long time. And whether they end up playing in the WNBL, being an administrator, being a referee, or playing for the Torns, like, that's a huge win in our role as, uh, as junior coaches. Um, the second one, second part of that that I wanted to talk about is uh, that when it comes to the end of the game, you know, it's really a game of mistakes. Like, not so much who makes plays, but who makes errors. Who turns the ball over at the end of the game? Who misses a free throw? And the beauty of that is how well we can execute fundamentals under pressure. Can we square up and get a catch? Can we play off two feet in the plate? paint and play on balance, all those things. Can we do that at the end of the game when the whistles go away? And all of that is developed through how we can use our constraints to develop individual skills and play one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm going to show, I don't know, 10 or 15 different ways to play one-on-one. -on -one. Think about how you can put that into your environment, but more importantly, how you can improve it. Like, the game's got to be about collaboration, and I'm very open to hearing how you can grow some ideas here and put them back into your context. I have no idea who you coach, but you know your group better than anybody else. So please think about how that can fit with who you have and how that might work. So I'll show a bunch of one-on-one. -on -one. Please, if you have a question while it's going, ask, uh, and we'll work through it that way and we'll build any questions before I start. Beautiful. All right, guys, everybody jump up. Uh, just grab a partner and a ball between two. Good. So you're going to have one partner will be in this line, and the first person is just going to have either feet on uh, each side of the keyway, and the other partner will be on that side. Let's have all the balls on this side of the floor. Quick. Good. Uh, James, can I get you to pass, mate? Appreciate it. Good. Jump up, straddle the block. Straddle the block, beautiful. Give the ball to the coach. What's the most missed shot in, what's the most missed shot in basketball? In your, at your level, have a guess. Good, good answer. Who else got one? The layup. <laughs> right. 
usually you make more laps, you win more games, and uh, I think at any level, especially juniors, just being able to find ways to have semi-contested layups. You know, not so much the ones where we have one line dribbling in and laying the ball up on the other line rebounding, but just with a little bit of token pressure, how can we finish at the basket? So all that's going to happen, guys, is you're going to have your chest towards the ball, spread your feet, and just have your hands ready. So get your feet. If this is one wide, get two wide. So nice and wide like you're in the post and have your hands ready. Chest towards James. Beautiful. James, you can pass it to either player. You can throw it slow or fast. As soon as I catch it, okay, your job, mate, is to come over and wall up at the rim. Okay, I've got to plant my inside foot. Try and get my feet to the baseline, I'm going to power up off the glass. As soon as the shot goes, just jump to the back of the line, and the next group's going to hustle in. Good? Let's have a look. Next, three, two, one. Next, go, three, two, one. Good, last two. Nice job, good, next group in. So, when we think about why people miss layups, there's usually two things. Eyes go down, or we shoot the ball too low off the glass. Okay, so, I'm down and ready, and when I catch it, okay, I've gotta get my eyes up early. So I have to have early eyes, and then when I put this ball up, I've gotta get it above the square, okay? So if I'm a coach and I want to coach eyes, I want to stand right here and see what they're looking at. So now guys take one half a step out and now when you catch it, you've got one power dribble and then you're going to finish. But we want to get our eyes up nice and early, okay? I'll just throw it a little quicker for this one, James. Thank you. Good. Next three, two, one. Good, try and get the ball up nice and high off the glass. Very good, way to get your eyes up. Take a bounce and move, nice job. Good, where do we need to get it? High off the glass, good. Hold there. Nice job. So. Just with your group, whatever it is, just pick one or two things you want to coach and then you stand underneath the baseline and as they come back, just eyes up, get the ball higher off the glass or whatever you think's important. We're just going to try and find different ways. So now you're going to slide underneath the charge circle, all right, with your chest towards the ball. You're going to slide through the charge circle. You can throw it at any time. Now I've got to catch it and I've got to make a quick, a quick finish. All right, let's have a look. So now the angles are just a little bit more difficult where you don't have a perfect one where you can put the ball off the glass. And these type of things, when you've got seven or eight players at practice, you might just do it for five minutes and you know they get seven or eight goes out at each where they have semi-contested layups. I think it's just a really good one to start practice. Anyone got any ideas on how they could change that or make it better for their group? Anything that comes to mind? Have a think about it. Good, hold there. Now jump on the elbows. Quick, here we go, everyone. Face the basket. Yeah, every, the line's going this way, towards the center line. Good. Now I'm down like a runner. Okay, starting a sprint. James is going to bounce past it just slightly out in front. And I have to run through the ball, okay, and finish off one foot. The ball can go either way, okay? So now you get a go at it and... You're coaching the offense. Get your eyes on the rim. What starts happening? The defense starts just fouling the crap out of each other. So now my job as a defender, as that ball goes there, is I want to meet my partner at the rim and rather wall up or contest with my outside hand. 
Why, why might I not contest across my body? Who's got an answer? Yeah, right. Referees see that, okay, and foul. Whether it looks like, whether it is or not, it might look like it. So try and contest with our outside hand. Okay, here we go. Go out of the way quickly. Just jump off through the baseline. Jump off through the baseline. Hold there. Good. Uh, let's. Uh, we're going to shoot ten laps. Let's see how many we make. Off we go. Good. Contest with your outside hand. Try and get there. Make sure they're out of the way before we throw it. Nice job, way to get up quick. Good, last three. Pretty good, hold there. Good, now with your partner, jump on the baseline in the corner. Let's have the boys there, the girls there. How many laps? What did we miss? Two or three? Four? Yeah, so 60%. I'm pretty sure the numbers in the NBL at the rim are at about 60% too. Not very good. <laughs> Might mean at your level it's 40%. So just giving five or six minutes to finishing at the basket can go a long way when you do it across time two or three times a week. Thanks, mate. You can see. Appreciate it. Who's your partner, mate? Uh, goes there, I guess. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Just jump to the front of the line. Good. Some of you guys did this with me last time. I'm on offense. You're on defense. We're both outside the three-point line, the white line. you got to try and follow me. I'm going to bounce the ball on my right hand. Okay? You cannot step inside the three-point line. Once I enter the three, you're entering the three, it's one on one. You have to try and get on the rim. You can go at any time you want. Same with you girls. You have to take one bounce, so you can't go on the first catch. Questions? Let's have a look at it. And this is not for everybody, but my style would be have a go at it, everyone gets a go, and then what do you want to coach? Versus you've got to get your eyes up, you've got to get on two feet, and suddenly I've talked for four minutes and they haven't had a go at it. So my thought is give them a go, see what's happening, and then come in for another 30 seconds a little bit later and then let the thing go. When the ball hits the ring and they get off through the baseline, the other side will go. Take, once you shoot it, you're going over there. Next. Stay outside the three-point line defense. Let's have one more. Okay, hold there, hold there. Good. So, now what, what we want to practice here is our change of speed. What's your name? Subi. Subi's chasing me. Okay, ready? I'm going slow. Now I'm going fast, now slow. Okay, so I want to change my speed and try and get away from my defender. Now, what's going to be quicker from the three-point line to the basket, one, one dribble or two? What's going to be quicker, one dribble or two? One. Two. Okay, I think one, all right? If I take one bounce and I get into my steps and I get on the rim, okay, that's going to be quicker than two dribbles. So when we get to here, try and take a long dribble, okay? Let's have a demonstration here. Girls, change our speed. Really good, excellent. Give a round of applause. Now, that's a poor example of questioning where you just put it to the whole group and then everyone goes, well, I'm not saying anything. And sometimes when you ask a question, it's good to say, Daniel, is one dribble going to be better than two? So now you're putting people on edge where they can't always just be a passenger. And that's got to be an environment where it's safe and it's okay to have the wrong answer. But think about if you're going to ask questions, put people on the spot because now they have to be. I remember the, the scariest class I did at university was criminal law where the teacher would come in and 
she would just point you out and you know if you didn't come in prepared you might as well not show up but we don't want it to be scary but we want to be in an environment where people have to step up and say something and be confident let's have a go here we go nice job next Defense has got to stay outside the three-point line until the offense goes in. One dribble, get up there. Nice job, there you go. Long dribble, long dribble. Very good. Stay outside the three, defense. Very good. Okay, hold it there. Now, you've got a really, really good player. They're far better than everybody on your team and all they keep doing is just making open right hand layups. They're falling asleep, it's that boring. Uh, Daniel, what would you do? To challenge them? Yeah. Um, do you just add more restrictions to them, I guess? With less dribbles or they have to finish with their left hand? Perfect. So while it's a team setting, you're thinking about individual development as what does somebody else have to improve. Like Johnny, I think we really need to work on your left hand. Maybe just stay on that side of the floor for, or you might just have your whole group on there. <laughs> but you know, how can you help that player go to another level? Uh, Z, right? You're going to stand on the block. Quick, quick. Yeah. Good. You got a partner who's on defense. Perfect. Going to play the same game. When you come across, okay, it's one on two. So now you're trying to get back in front. Z, you're going to protect the rim, okay? Uh, let's have everybody on this side. A few ready to go on defense. Let's have a look. Here we go. Turnover. Next group. Here we go. Beautiful. Good. So. Whether you do this for your whole group or now, now just how can I build up? Keep going. How can I build it up and just make it a little bit more challenging? Great wall up. Nice job. Good, hold there. And if you were at practice, the easiest way to just build it up is now put an offense on the perimeter and now you've got two on two or now you've got someone in the corner, now you've got three on three and now you're playing one on one within a setting where now it's a decision, do I shoot it or do I pass it? And as a general principles, we want to think about things that are really simple that will apply to a lot of parts of the game is if there's nobody on the ball, I want to shoot it. If there's one person on the ball, I can drive it or pass it. And then if there's two on the ball, pass it. And that can be coached within here, within five on five, within whatever. If there's zero on the ball, shoot it. And you can shoot it, drive it or pass it when there's zero on the ball. But I think when you have juniors and you're open, you just want to encourage, this is what we want you to get to, that you shoot it. If there's one on the ball, drive it or pass it. If there's two on the ball, pass it. Uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, everybody with a partner just jump on uh, the wings. One ball between two. Good. Uh, sorry, everybody needs a ball. My fault. Now. There's a lot of uh, discussion about drills versus games. Has anyone sort of heard about that and we want to get away from drills versus games? Nod your head if you have an idea. Um, but the prob what would be the problem if we just played games all the time? Who's got something? Just anything off the top of your head. If we just played three on three, five on five all the time, every practice. Focus on the detail? Couldn't focus on the detail? Something? Yes, you couldn't maybe select something to focus on. What else? Repetition. Lack of repetition. Very, very good. So sometimes you might want to use a 
drill because you want to practice something particular. We're missing too many power layups here and we just need to get some reps on it. And as long as you don't live there, you can always go back to the game. But I do really think that a balance and using both of those as tools is important. So let's say that, you know, we keep, we played on Thursday night, we're driving the ball, we keep just jumping off one foot and missing too many layups. We want to emphasize playing off two feet as an example. So I've got the ball, name? Toby. You're facing the basket, good. I've got my basketball on his hip. I'm pressing right here, get down the stance or else I'm gonna move you to the corner. Perfect, okay? Whenever you want, you're gonna drive the ball. You got two bounces on your left hand. You're gonna to come to a jump stop and lay the ball up. The offense is gonna push on Toby's hip. Just tuck it underneath your arm. Imagine you're driving it and just try and drive him out. Then when he gets to his two feet, I stop pushing him and I'm gonna contest with my right hand. Let's have a look. You can go whenever you like. Just make sure the ball starts on his hip. Okay, good. Other side, have a go. Two feet. We're playing off two feet here. And you could, you could pick whatever finish you like, but this is a great way where you can choose what you want to use, but just some semi, just some contact to see what that feels like versus nobody being around the offense. Just watch the end of the finish. Just watch their feet when they shoot the ball. Hold there, hold there. Hold there. Good. What do we see on that, la that last one right there? She jumped into the player. Yeah, jumped into the player. What do you see with her feet? They came together. They came together. Right, so when we want to think about playing through contact, we've got to play if this is one wide, right? This is two wide. Yeah, so now when I take a hit, I can brace the contact and finish at the basket. So especially when you watch, you might over teach, just get lower and wider, get as wide as you can, and then as they start playing, it becomes something natural, but if you wanna play off two feet and play through contact, you gotta play low and wide. Now come up to the, uh, you guys call it, come up to the seams, and we'll play exactly the same game, okay? Exactly the same game. I want you to get your feet nice and wide on the finish. Here we go. Excellent job. Okay. Try and get to the charge circle. Get to the charge circle. Try and get your feet wider, mate. Okay, good, hold there. Now when you get in, uh, jump on my hip, got the ball. Yep. I'm gonna drive it. I'll give you three bounces. It's gonna be one, two, three. Now I'm gonna plan my outside foot first. Then my inside foot, I'm going to shot fake. Okay, and now I'm going to turn, I'm going to shoot the ball off my shoulder. Okay, we call this a rondo. Okay, a rondo, let's have a look at it. Go really slow on the first one to get an idea of your feet. Go. Good. Excellent. Maybe two dribbles is fine. See how you go. If you need three, that's good too. Go. Very good. Uh, have another go. You good? Good. Go first. Go first. Good. Go as slow as you need to go on the first one. Good. I really think this finishing move, the rondo, right, is really good for playing on balance. And now I don't shoot it. And now when I turn back, I've got someone behind the ball I can kick it out to. Okay, hold there. And we can 
you know, you're coaching your team, you can clean up the detail, get the ball above your eyes on the shot fake, and then again, when I pivot, I want to finish low and wide and finish with the ball outside my shoulder. That's all up to you as to what your group's ready for. Uh, now we're going to play the same game. Go one ball between two. Quick. So those two ones there were what we call scripted. We've told them you have to shoot a power layup and you have to shoot a rondo. Now we're going to play it live. Okay, but if you shoot a power layup, you get two points. If you shoot a rondo, you get three points. All right, any layup is just worth one. We're going first to seven here. So I've got the ball in the middle of the floor. You guys have your toes on the three-point line, down in a stance, ready to play. I'm just going to drop the ball. You're on offense, you're on defense. You're going to drive it middle on your right hand. Okay, what's the scoring system? What do you get one point for? Good. And when you ask a question, you ask one person, you have all these other people who start butting in, so you have to try and manage that so that they get an opportunity to, an to, ask, to answer the question. What do you get two points for? Uh, two for power Very good. What do you get three for? Oh, the rondo. The rondo. All right, let's see how we go. Down in a stance. Beautiful. Next, out of the way. Just jump off through the baseline so they don't run into each other. Love it. Ah! Very nice. Good, last two. Good, and when, when you're Tasmania or you're the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, you're usually the smallest team in the league, so you have to emphasize playing off two feet, getting Victoria up in the air, and then you know finishing or kicking out. So playing off two feet, is under 12s, under 14s, under 16s, just because it helps you slow down and play on balance. So some things you could do within those settings to help each individual is like, okay, just work on your right hand, just play on that side of the floor, okay? Or, uh, you know, Johnny's your best player, uh, you, you gotta finish without the glass. So just think about within your individual setting, how can you just help each player focus on one thing? And you might just say, what do you need to work on? And you'll have half your team who, uh, I don't know, but you have the other five who go, I really need to work on my left hand. And now there's some sense of autonomy and you know, that drives motivation that I'm working on what I need to work on. Uh, I've got next here. All right, beautiful. Uh, just jump in a, a line, now you're in groups of three. Groups of three. Good, one ball between three. One ball between three. Excellent. Uh, the line's going to start right here. It's going to be person with the ball, then two without the ball. Yeah, beautiful. Everyone just line up like that. Offense. Offense. Defense. So we're going to continue with the theme of uh, finishing and shooting layups, but now we're going to add the pass. So, Ollie, you can dribble the ball around that cone on your right hand or that cone on your left hand. As you go, the offense is going to go opposite. You have to chase, okay? 
And now when I turn the corner, uh, you can't go past the elbow. So if you get there, just keep dribbling nice and wide. And you've got to make the pass to the cutter. They have to finish without a dribble. Okay, let's have a look. Good, off through the baseline, next group. Out of the way, quick. Can't go past the elbow, can't go past the elbow. Excellent, really good. Can't go past the elbow. One more. Good, hold. Okay, you're coaching, you're coaching that team right there. And you just saw that, all right? What would you say? Or what did you see? Go left. Yes, they all went right. <laughs> so sometimes it's good to give them choice, and then other times, like, uh, you have to alternate every time. Or we're all going left because we're working on our left hand. Uh, the other part of it, is when I turn the corner, I want to give a visual and a verbal. Yep. If you don't know the person's name, yep. All right, and I want to show my hand. This is where I want the ball. What happens if the ball comes behind me? Yep. So we want to make the pass easy for our teammate. We want to make the pass easy for our teammate. Okay. Uh, let's make sure we alternate between going right and left here. Let's have a go. Okay, hold. Name? Logan. Logan, what did I just say? Get a hand up. And? Ball. Yeah, okay, which one didn't you do? Ball. Yeah, okay, all right, so let's make sure that we give a call. If you don't hear a call, you're not allowed to throw the pass. Go. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Okay, hold. Nice job. Uh, now you have to make the pass outside your body. So if this is inside my body, this is outside. Okay, let's have a go. Lovely, good. And you might, you might not want that, okay, in the semi-final in the fourth quarter, but, you know, just exploring some creativity and having a little bit of fun with it, and then three or four years later, uh, an under-18 comes off a pick and roll, okay, and bowls it to the right-hand corner and looks like Will McDowell-White, that's pretty good. But sometimes you have to foster it with give it a go, and if it ends up in the back wall, so what? You know, it's practice. Lovely, I love that. Good, hold there. Good. Let's do the same thing on this side of the floor. Good, we're uh, in the corner there. And definitely with whatever your drills or games are, make sure you do them from different angles. And sometimes you just get caught in the habit of always doing it there. But making sure that we do stuff from the corners and doing stuff from below the foul line. Uh, and you have to throw it behind your back. Good luck, here we go. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Gotta give it a go, give it a go, out of the way. Yeah, here we go, next one. It's all right. Love that, love that. Excellent. Watch out! Go again, go again. Now hold, hold, hold. Now let the girls go. Yeah. Now. 
what's the difference between the behind the back right, for the passer and just the pass so I can throw it in front of my body? Different angle. Different angle? Yeah. When, I have, when I'm throwing the behind the back, I really have to get ahead of the ball right, so I can get my ass behind it. So if you're the cutter, just tuck it underneath your arm and start to go. You're chasing me, Subi. Right. And the cutter's not ahead. We're on the same line. You might have to put the brakes on and then go. So you're working, you're working in time. Okay. There we go. Let's say uh, behind the back or through the legs here. Your choice. All right, here we go. Now you can go either way. Beautiful, love that, good. Yes, very nice, really good. Last two here. Last one. Good. Uh, just jump on the baseline with a partner and a ball between two. And that might look like garbage, but then you have one moment in a game where a girl or a boy drives it and throws it behind their back. And everybody's like this, and that's love of the game, right? You just, those small moments, how can you foster them within practice to see what might happen a long way down the road? Uh, Jump on the wing, Ollie, and you run underneath the basket with the ball at the top, and underneath the basket with the ball, wing, underneath the basket with the ball. So just one offensive player outside, and then all the defense have got the ball underneath the basket. Yeah. Good. So you guys who don't have a ball, jump behind somebody. Yeah, that's fine. So. All those drills we really just worked on uh, zero on the ball, shoot it, right? Everything we did, I had an advantage and I've got to shoot it. So now we're really going to work on do I shoot it or do I drive it? So we're just trying to build it up in that way. This is called uh, three pass one on one, just about playing against the long closeout. Toby, right? Good. All you're going to do is find your partner, you're going to pass it and start to run out. That's one pass. Oh, you're going to throw it back to me, that's two pass. Okay, and three pass and we're playing one-on-one. -on -one. You've got three dribbles to get on the rim, okay? I'll shoot it. You can shoot it, okay? We know where this is going. Here we go. Good. Once they get out of the way, next person go. Next. Ah. Next. Next. Okay, hold. Good. And when you play one-on-one, -on -one, it starts to become about integrity of the game. What are you effing doing throwing that pass to me? But that's about competitiveness. We're playing a three and he's going to ruin my possession, so that's really good. Uh, let's just, for right now on defense, you've got to get your hand above the ball and you've got to call ball. Okay? So you could play one-on-one -on -one and coach both sides of the ball, but just keep it, keep it really, really simple and this is what we want to get done. Off we go. Good, nice wall up. Next. Oh, oh, oh. Last one. Good. 
Okay, now just to build, okay, when I call ball, it's got to be like, you know, there's 5,000 fans at under 18 nationals and I can't hear a thing. Ball! Okay, and now when I get on the ball, I want to dig up and make him play off his back foot, okay, and be a little bit more confrontational. Yeah, on offense, I've got to play off the three point line, sitting here. So now when this pass goes, throw it, close out. I'm playing through the catch, not on the catch. Okay, so I get momentum through my catch. So get off the line and play through the catch. I want you to be confrontational on your closeout. Here we go, playing a three, go. Stop, 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 stop. Wait, what's your name? Are you afraid of him? No, he's like Well, let's go, go play against him, here we go. Come on, Z, here we go. Good, good, go get it. Next. Turn over. And you gotta figure out what competition looks like for your group, but sometimes you gotta, let's go. You know, we're just going through the motions and we're not getting after it. Next, go. Play through the catch, play through the catch. There you go, great job. Nice, beautiful, nice Rondo. There we go, next one. Good take. Call ball. Get a call ball, Toby. Uh oh. Hand above the ball. Next. Good. Hold there. Uh, okay. Just get with your partner, quick. Stay there, Z. Good, who's your partner? Beautiful, jump on the elbow. Good, quick, pass me the ball, jump on the slot. Partner, good, one on the wing, offense. Defense on the lane line right there. Good, uh, the ball's gonna be over there, so just turn. So now, it's like, I wanna build this up. So this is three on three which is off my topic, but just as an example. So now, we're on defense, okay, us three. Where are you going? You're on the slot there, you're on offense, good. Now I throw the ball out, okay. You're on the nail, you're the captain, don't go anywhere yet. Okay, and now we're playing off this drive. So now that drive goes, where are you going? Drift, diagonal, stay or go. All right, we're playing three on three, let's have a look at it. Good. Uh, next group in. Figure it out. Next group in. I don't care how you get there. And this is just an example of just how you build it up. So now I'm not just focusing on the drive decision, but now, beautiful, good, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, Hold. Good. Just set up for the next rep. Quick. What did we see there? Forget about the basketball. Yeah. Okay, so, I think sometimes it's good to have a rotation A, B, C, D, but whatever your group is, sometimes they just need to, like, what are we doing? Figure it out, talk to somebody, and let's get it done. You know, so you might not do that all the time in practice, but sometimes it's fine. Just, I don't know how to rot I don't know how you're gonna rotate. You gotta get it done. Yeah, and then you're just counting five, four, three, and eventually, you know, they'll get it going. But think about, do I wanna rotate? Do I wanna script it for them all the time? And then sometimes we gotta, we gotta figure this thing out. Uh, so let's have a, 
let's have another couple of looks. How are we rotating right now? But what is our rotation? What can we do? Okay, let's go. Let's try that. Offense to defense, defense out. New offense is coming in, so that means we're going to need somebody here. What's your job? What's your job when you get there? Close out with a hand above the ball and call ball. Call nail, call captain. Go. No, no. Turn over. Next one. Three, two, one. Go. Drive. Drive to score. Good. Three, two, one. Go. Captain. Drive to score. Drive to score. Three, two, hold. Ah, ah, go back. Good. Remember, play through the catch, not on the catch. Good. You guys on the perimeter. Hungry hands. Play off the line. Go. Three, two, one. Drive to score. Great job. Good. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two. Okay, hold. Now, nice job, nice finish. Out. Zero on the ball. What do we do? Shoot it. One on the ball. Drive it or pass it. Two on the ball. Good. Pass it. Good. I love that take. But I don't think that if you went to under 20 nationals, you're going to be able to do that. So sometimes kids are going to be able to get away with things within your environment and just trying to tie it to if you want to go up a level or if you want to go there, that might not be the best decision. You know, and that's sometimes how you can just try and tidy up some habits that are going to help them for the long term. I uh, just got, let's have this, half underneath that basket, half underneath that basket, and, uh, oh, sorry, one third, one third, and one third. Yep, ball here. Beautiful. Half, half, and half wasn't really going to work. Jump on the uh, circle. Yep, good. Got the ball. We're going to uh, just do some stuff one-on-one -on -one in transition here. So, Z, your feet are nailed to the circle there. Yep, beautiful. Logan? Yes. Okay, you're going to come with the bounce. You're going to get as much speed as you can. You can't move until he gets to the center line. Okay, it's one-on-one. -on -one. When that shot goes up, Toby, you're coming in on defense on this side. Name again, mate, sorry. Josh, you're going to be offense going that way. Good. Let's have a go. Go again. Go again. What's wrong? Well, you got the ball. Oh, did I just... My fault. Good. You're on offense. You're on defense. You will become on offense. You will be on defense. Good. Go. Good. Just watch and just think about what you would coach when I stop it. Go, go, go. Somebody has to go in the middle. Yeah. Good. Next one. Hold. Nice job. Hold, hold, hold. Good. And uh, that's probably why I wouldn't coach the drill and the skill within the drill all at once because we already had a player forget about what you have to do on defense. So just trying to lay your teaching points. And we see a lot of basketball on Twitter 
an Instagram that looks like this, okay, with a thousand cones. But what we're working on right here, and really what the game is about, is just play in a straight line and make one quick move. So I'm in transition, I want to have a long dribble and push the bounce out. And now when I get to here, I want to make one quick move and try and get my shoulder right through the defender's hip. Okay, try and get your shoulder right through their hip. All right, let's have a go. Go, go, long dribble. In on defense, in on defense. Out, hold there. If I was trying to build competition in my practice and I had a relationship with that player, I would stop at one-on-one -on -one and like shoot the ball. You know? But that's whoever you have. Keep going. Whoever you have. But if you want to try and build competition, you can't, can't stand for that. Giving up on a play. I'm not being critical here. They're just trying to figure it out. Next, next. Long bounce, long bounce. Nice job, good. Next, go, go, get some speed, get some speed, Z. Long dribble, long dribble. Good, next, go. Good, next. Very good, love that. Okay, good, hold there, hold there. Everyone's got a partner. Quick, bring it in, one ball between two. Everyone's got a partner. Good. Now the, the partner with the ball is underneath that basket. The partner without the ball is rather standing in that corner there or that corner there. I th I'm a big, uh, big fan of the inside out dribble. Right, especially in transition, they're really simple. Okay, you don't have to like overcomplicate it. But when you're on your right hand or your left hand, just getting the ball to the middle of your body, selling it with your shoulder, and having a long dribble. And uh, I think that that's something really simple that everybody at every level can do and get good at. And just how can I make a simple, simple play in a straight line? In the end, that's that's what's going to get it done. Not dribbling through 35 cones. Uh, so. Logan, you've got your partner. Now what you're going to do is you're going to roll the ball out. Is this your partner? Yeah. Good. Start to roll it and start to run. You've got to get your feet above the three-point line. Z. As that starts to roll, you're going to meet the ball. Okay? And when you catch it here, you've got to make one move and get on the rim. Yeah. Okay? Let's have a look at it. So this is probably the same concept as that, but if you only have a half court at practice, uh, now you're just playing the same thing here. Go. Go, go, attack the ball. Great job. Hold there. And just recognition of we're tying that concept that we worked on at the start of practice into the next thing. And good players can blend things together. That's really good. Go. Roll the ball a little faster. Go. Go, go, attack the ball. Travel, next one, go. Hands up, wall up. Very good, go, go. Tack the ball, tack the ball, Ollie. Go. Okay, hold. Now, uh, if you, had a, if you had a group that was really, really struggling, like maybe the difficulty is too high for that, you don't have an advantage, here's maybe how you could change it. Just jump up here and just stand, uh, stand with your toes on the three-point line like this. Yep, face that way. Let's just say we just want to work on the inside out or the crossover. Now you're going to catch as much speed as you can. You have to go inside out when you get to the back of her jersey and you've got one maybe two more dribbles and you're on the rim okay when what's your name again sienna. sienna when you can see her so when she gets to there or there you're back on defense good next just put it let's just figure that out just try that on both sides yeah jump up on d let's get someone here quick 
Good, on the three-point line, on the three-point line. Inside out on your left hand, go. Good, out of the way, next one. Good, next. Long dribble, long dribble. Nice job, next one. Very good, next one. Good. Okay, hold there. All right, now turn around, put your toes on the blue line. Good. My thought is it's okay to try things and they don't work, then just, just change them and filter them to your group. So now it's the same thing. Uh, you can't move until her toes get to the three-point line. Yeah, uh, inside out. Go. Nice job. Very good. Yes, your choice. Just start on the same hand. Good. Now hold. Now if the inside out's too easy for you, all right, go through the legs. Your choice. You can inside out's fine. Go. Yeah. Your choice. Very good. Excellent. Next one. Very good. Good, hold there. Now go to the corners, put the defense in the short corner. Keep breaking my own rule and doing everything from the top. So now I've, I've got my, imagine the short corners here. You got one dribble, one move, okay? You can't move till your partner gets to your hip, okay? Good, next. Wait till they get to your hip. Move. Good. Good. Uh, hold there. Good. Again, depending on your group, they're going at the same time, but nobody ever crashed into each other. You know, so you might say when the ball hits the ring, the next one goes, and then they have to navigate what's around them so they don't run into each other. Uh, let's have last five here, last five. Good, hold there. Think about this. Step up, short corner, brother. Good, when I make my move, right, and now you start to turn, I want to imagine we're on a train line, right? I'm on one rail, he's on the other rail. So when he starts to get on my rail, okay, I'm trying to get on his rail, and I want to take both rails so I can go and score. Okay, so girls, you've got to be more physical on your drive. Okay, you've got to own your rail and try and take your partners. All right, let's have a look. Go, physical. Love that, excellent. Next one. Physical, physical. Good. Very good. Good, next. Okay, good, hold there, have a seat. Nice job. Have a seat, good work. Hey, so there's, there's a thousand different ways uh, to play one-on-one. -on -one. I think if I, was, if I was coaching a team right now during the season, that's probably Probably spend four or five minutes with a contested layup one at the start of practice, and then maybe six or seven minutes. So that's not that's not your whole practice. It's not everything, but it's definitely uh, part of. Uh, any questions about one on one or anything that was just covered there? The penalties for mislaps and things like that. Okay. Uh, it's a good question. 
I've sometimes cased it this way, like if you miss a layup you think you should make uh, like one push up or two slides more so than everybody on the baseline or a force penalty. Uh, probably the other way is to go to a go to a score like we're, we're playing a three here so everybody has some incentive and uh, motivation. I think it's a short term solution, I try and stay away from it but I will use it as a tool if that I don't know if that's a great answer. But it's a sometimes, a sometimes thing. Uh, anybody else one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, do you ever teach the defense on one-on-one? -on -one? Definitely, definitely. And uh, you might do the same drill every week and just have a different focus. Like, you've got to get down in your stance on the balls of your feet and uh, call ball or, you know, on the second dribble you have to chest blast. Uh, definitely, yep. I would just, my thing is, whatever you do have a narrow focus so it's easy to coach and the players know what you're trying to get better at. Um, so absolutely, and that's the advantage of maybe using the same platform drill every single week and just tweaking it here or there. So the players already know we're in three pass one on one, you must call ball and wall up at the rim. You know, and uh, three defensive stops is a win. So now you're incentivizing uh, what you're coaching I didn't coach the defense a lot there, uh, more so from a standpoint of if the offense gets better, the defense will improve, but absolutely, for sure. Good question. Uh, anybody else, one-on-one? -on -one? Beautiful. Uh, hand up if in your league you get pressed or zone. Nice and high. Yep. Play against press or zone. Beautiful. So uh, it's definitely a challenge, and it's as much a challenge at our level about how we deal with pressure, especially uh, in juniors, but at both levels, usually the bigger and stronger and overgrown athletes who are born in January are the ones who have the advantage. And how do we, ha how do we give tools to our players so that they can, they can deal with pressure? So uh, I'm gonna show you some things I like to do to play against pressure and practice it. Not so much from a standpoint of a press break or a zone offense, but more so from here's some concepts that are really important when you're playing against pressure. And they're very, very simple. Pivot, pass fake, passing, catching, retreat dribbles, having vision, all those things are the most basic things, but in the fourth quarter of the game when the pressure's on, those things are the ones that have to, uh, have to get done. So I'm gonna start one-on-one -on -one and just show you some things that are worth uh, thinking about and trying. Uh, grab a partner and a ball between two. And uh, just get, you need a, a square meter. Go wherever you want. Have at least most of us in the half court here. Yeah. Hurry up, let's go. Doing a great job, guys. Good work. Good. Uh, go further down the floor, please. Yeah, good. Uh, let's have everybody... Can you face that way, your pair? Beautiful, everybody facing that wall has the ball. Great, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna pass the ball to your partner and you're gonna close out. For four seconds, your job on defense is to try and slap the ball out of your hands. Your job is to pivot and protect the ball and keep your body between the ball. So I'm trying to dig up, you're gonna pivot, protect it, I'm gonna reach, I can, let's say if normal defense is one, we're defending 1.5 here, we're allowing a little bit of fouling. Make sense? That's the first four seconds. After that's happened, I'm gonna to count to four again. Now you have to retreat dribble. You can go on a slight diagonal to your left without running into the coaches, or a slight diagonal to your right. So off you go, just retreat. And I'm trying to steal it. You gotta keep the ball outside your body. And then I'm gonna to count to four again. That would be the third one. Now you're gonna pivot and protect the ball again exactly the same. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? 1.5 fouls, so I want to see some, some physicality here. Try and steal it, try and rip it out of their hands. Go! One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Nice job. Walk it back down and flip it over. Now, whenever you pivot or retreat dribble, 
you want to see the floor. Okay, so I want you to read what's written on the back of the wall there. Okay, every single time. So I pivot, right, I protect the ball, but I've got my chin on my inside shoulder and I'm seeing what's in front of me. Question? Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice job. Flip it over, go back. And a really simple concept against pressure. Guarding me, that's the basket over there. Yep. Body, body, ball. Yep. Pressure, body, body, ball. Yep. And however you've got to get that done, you've got to keep your body in between right, the ball and your defender. Let's have one more go. Okay. I, want, I want you to be more physical on defense. Try and rip it out of their hands. If they get narrow, all right, Drive them, push them over. Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice job. Flip it. Good. And two things you see against pressure. Eyes go down, all right, and they stand up. Yeah, so you want to continue to coach that. And to your question, the better you coach the defense, right, the more your offense build. And especially with some of your players, you gotta like you gotta be more nasty. You know, that's that's what we're preparing for uh, on the weekend. Uh, let's try uh, this now. Just jump in a group of three, please. And jump on the sideline, on this sideline. Yep, spread out. You go all the way down the floor. Good. Now one person go to the other sideline. And we'll have one person on offense. And one on defense. Yeah, beautiful. Good. So the uh, 12 second pressure, just a warm up, you know, something, bit of fun, get him used to playing through contact. So now your job, okay, is you have the bounce. And this is more about bringing the ball up in the backcourt and about playing in a limited time and space. And I've got to get the ball from A to B, okay? Which to me, that's what ball handling is about. Not about making moves and you know, working on Instagram stuff, but getting the ball from A to B as efficiently as you can. And you think about Magic Johnson, he's a 6'9 point guard, he had no moves, he just did this. Done. So, like, flashy can be uh, overrated sometimes. You have to get the ball to your partner off the dribble before the split line, okay? So you have to make that pass before here, okay? Your area is from the baseline. A lot of lines going on here. I feel like I'm at Kingston. Uh, to uh, this yellow line here, all right? Your boundary, Toby, is from the yellow line here to the center line, okay? Girls, center line to yellow line. Questions? Have a go. Nice, I like it. Get into him, get into him. There you go. Good, figure out your rotation, however you want. Good. Good, hold there, hold there, hold there. Holy. Now, uh, the person on this side, the ball has to be, ball has to land somewhere here in this uh, strike zone for you to get a point. Okay, so everything that goes outside there, no point. Have a go. Here we go. Good. And, and now we've got tackling, all right? We'll try and rein that in a little bit. <laughs> okay, hold. Hold. Nice job. Good. Okay. And you see the passes start, start going everywhere. Uh, and we want to go back to uh, 
the drill around the arc. You guys remember one-on-one -on -one around the arc where you had somebody behind you? What were we working on with the bounce? Change of speed, excellent. Okay. So when we handle the ball, we want to change our speed and we want to change our stance. So you're guarding me, mate, or you better be able to play with those shoes. All right, here we go. So I want to sometimes go slow and I'm standing up and then sometimes I drop my hips, okay, and get down. So I want to change my speed and change my stance, okay. You get a uh, one point if you make that pass on target. I'll give you two if you throw it off one hand. Two points if you throw the ball off one hand, okay. Let's have a go. Oh. Take your time. And uh, I, I don't really like putting a dribble limit on it, but maybe a time limit. Maybe you got six seconds. Uh, to me, that's more realistic. It doesn't matter if they take an extra dribble, but you got to get there within a certain time because. What the dribble limit can do is it can, can encourage this. Yeah, and we, we, don't, we want to stay away from that. We want to use our retreat dribbles and be comfortable with the ball, more so than encouraging picking the ball up. Any questions on this? Good. Okay, hold there. Hold there, jump on the baseline. Uh, how many girls we got here? Six. Six. How many boys? Seven. Alrighty, beautiful. Uh, boys, can we get half in red, half in uh, yellow? Girls, you're good to stay as you are. So, uh, this is called three on four rugby, and I'll explain how it works in a second. Uh, take the ball out. Guys, jump on the elbows. Yellow, you have two, uh, you have an extra defender. So put somebody on the ball, uh, two guys match up, and then uh, put somebody at the center line, at the circle. Yeah, three on four. Good, so the rules of the game are red. In the back court, you have no dribble. So when the ball comes in, let's say you go and trap it because you've got an extra defender, you have no bounce, so you have to pass, fake and pivot, get the ball over halfway. Just throw the ball over the top, don't steal it. Good, run down the floor. Good, throw it over the top. Okay, hold. Okay. Now, when the ball crosses halfway, you can dribble. You have to get the ball inside the charge circle. So tuck it under your arm, imagine you're dribbling it. Get it inside the charge circle. Okay, now you have to make a pass outside the three to get a point. So you've got to move around. That would be one point. That's why we call it rugby. You've got to throw it backwards to get a point. Let's have a go at it. Girls, you're going to play the same game. We'll just add one of the boys in, so be ready to go. Okay? You can run the baseline. Go! Over the top. As many as you want. Play, play, play! Turnover, good. Get out. Here we go. Girls, come in. Hold there, we we'll need an extra. Good, all right, hand up if you're on offense. Yep, good, hand up if you're on defense. Uh, we just need, Toby, you wanna jump on defense as well? Everyone know who's on their team? You're on defense, right? Yep, now, let's say the ball comes in, okay? We wanna try and catch the ball as high as we can. Yep, we wanna stay out of the trap zones. Now we wanna have short receivers. So you might cut to the sideline. Okay, you might stay right there and step in, or you might cut to the middle, but we want to have short passes against the trap, and you've got to pivot and pass fake every time you catch it. You've got to pivot and pass fake. Okay, let's have a go. You're, you're allowed to run the baseline. Go. Pivot, pass fake. Good, hop, go again, have another go. You're good. Good, pivot. Pass fake, there you go. Oh, you all right? Good, jump out girls, boys come in. Wait, 
Okay, we need one more. Do we? Are we good? Beautiful. Okay. Go. Pivot. Good. Pivot. Pivot. Pass fake. Good. Good. Go, go, go. Good. Gotta get outside the three. Done. Good. Hold. Good. Come back. We wouldn't count that if you were being harsh. Come back. Quick, quick, quick. Good. Girls want to have another go. Now, uh, it's too difficult. Just add one dribble in the back court. Okay, and now you got a little bit more space. But the main thing we want to do is you're allowed to line up however you like. So offense, you come up here and stack up. And now automatically, we're hopefully getting our catches nice and high. But as the game goes on and we get more tired and more tired, we start living down here. We're further and further away from the basket. Okay, ready? I'm gonna throw it in on refereeing. Go. Okay, go back. Now you're coaching the inbounder. Where do we want to stand? Run the baseline. Excellent, you can run the baseline and you want to start off the backboard so I don't throw that pass that goes in, okay? So start away from the backboard and then run to shorten. Go. Good, you can run. There you go. Good, pivot. Gotta get a trap. Keep playing, keep playing, we're good. There you go, good, nice job. He can dribble now, he can bounce it. Gotta get in the charge circle, gotta get in there. Nice job, come back, next one. Now, you got enough players? Yeah. Now, girls, once the ball crosses the half and boys, you got to get one foot inside the charge circle and then pivot and throw it out. So you got to drive like you're trying to score, get the ball right in there. And you see how it looks really, really ugly at the start, but as they get more goes at it, you coach them through it. You, you got to be comfortable. We got to play the best team in the league. They're going to trap us. We got to be able to play through this. Go. Pivot. Good. Got to get it out. Done. Nice job. Good. Come back. And you see, uh, it's three on four, and you got people running away. <laughs> Like, so you got to make sure we have two short receivers, okay, because what's the danger of these passes? They get picked off, okay, so it's okay to go over the top, but make sure we have two short receivers. Go. Good, pivot. Don't run away. Come to it, keep coming, keep cutting. Good, play through it, we're okay. Good, take it out, take it out. There you go, good, who's open? Run to it, run to it. Come back, there you go, pivot. You got the bounce now. Good, come back. And uh, you just, it's too difficult, just take one defender out. Three on three, full court. Let's, uh, let's try that, take one defender out. Still have to get a trap. Still have to get a trap, go. Run, run, good. Go again. Pivot, good, get back, get back. Pivot, pivot. Okay, good. Jump on the baseline. Girls, you want to go? Three on three. And I uh, saw what happened at the end there. All right. The job's done. He catches it, he stands up. He doesn't pivot, he just turns and bulldozer comes through on the end there. But 
Sometimes the whistles go away and you've got to be more disciplined to play down okay, and finish the possession. That's about winning plays. Let's have a go here, girls. Three on three. Got to trap it, trap it, pivot. Okay, hold, go back. Quick, quick, take it out. Now, uh, no. what's your name? Make sure that we got a short. Matilda, make sure. Unless you're going to get the baseball, make sure we have two short passes. Here we go. Good, you can run. Got to get a trap. Got to get a trap. Trap it. You got to trap it. Come trap it. You got to trap it. You got to get one trap. Good, go back. Have to trap. Have to get one trap. Quick. Go get it, go get it, go get it. Good, get back, get back. Pivot. Nice job, very good, good. Uh, come over here, guys and girls, just line up right here, face the crowd. Quick, spread out. Just face, just face the crowd, line up, yeah. Hardest job in the world, being a demonstrator. Just a big round of applause, please. Good. 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 Thanks, guys. You can have a seat. Appreciate your time. Good work. Uh, so, just to re-emphasize playing against pressure with the ball, changing stance and changing speeds. Yep. Against trapping, short passes, and playing low and pivoting. All the things that you coach at under 12s and we coach against our guys when we're in a wrestling match with New Zealand, the things don't, the things don't change. But uh, my style is I like to coach where it's a little bit ugly and a little bit more physical than the game because I think that uh, it puts you in a scenario where you can be prepared for finals or the next level or whatever it is. Uh, handling pressure, any questions or thoughts or ideas? Anything you like, didn't like? We're getting that extra pressure. Yes. Do you think that's a risky of them, them going out and playing? Uh, potentially, yeah. I'd be willing to take the trade off at juniors. Yeah. We don't pressure the ball enough. Yeah, and you know, we play too passive defensively. It's a good, good question. I think it's easier to start aggressive and adjust back more than I'm always guarding Sam like this. And now I'm asking him when we get down eight to get in here and guard the ball. That would be my thought process uh, with that. Any other questions on that? Beautiful. Uh, any questions on anything unrelated to the court? I was just gonna ask, um, for me, passing is one of the right. worst skills that we have. Yep. And I think it's one of the most difficult things for kids to practice on their own. Yep. Um, particularly if they don't have somebody at home that will pass the ball with them. Have you got any creative ways, different drills, what have you, just to be able to work on passing either with two players or on their own, being able to practice passing up against the ball, I guess? Definitely. Uh, I think just through your practice, putting a value on it is a simple one. The uh, sideline one-on-one. You know where it's you get the point for the pass, uh, the finishing where they had to run around the cones. You know, a one, a, maybe a point for on time and on target uh, would be uh, another way. Passing by yourself, uh, it was almost even sometimes. And I know with the younger girls that I'm coaching, it's almost the mechanics of it as well. Yeah. Because there's some of them that, yeah, you know, they're two hands here or they've. In order to get the power to pass, they're sort of having to definitely get two girls up. Low. Yeah. So it's almost even going back to the basics of mechanics of passing, I think. Good. Uh, just simple things you can do with your warm up. Uh, just face each other. Yep. Uh, come in the middle just so all the coaches can see. About half a metre away is good. Good. Spread your hands and open your palms. Good. Can't touch your body and just flip the balls back and forth. Go. Quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Palms up above your head. Good. And especially with young kids about just opening and spreading your fingers, opening your hands. Uh, now, one low, one high. One low, one high. Good. Change. Good. Hold. Now you got, you got two. 
you got two hands on the ball. I'm going over the top, you're going underneath. Just hand a little closer, a little closer together. Oh, <laughs> go, go, quicker, 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 quicker. Am I always going over? Yes, yeah. Okay. Stand closer. Go, 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 go. Three, four, five, six, get it off your body. Seven, eight, nine, ten, flip it. Good. Now uh, face that way. Good. Uh, sorry, face the sideline. You're facing this sideline. Just flip it behind your back on your right hand. Go. Quick, 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 quick. Good. Hold there. Have a seat. Thank you. I think that some just two or three minutes when you're warming up or before you get on the floor, uh, eye hand coordination, uh, I think that that's all small parts. You definitely want to live in the playing and trying to coach the passing through that, but hopefully that gives you some ideas, especially with young kids. Just spread your hands, I think, is a big, a big thing. Uh, any other questions? Anything you want? Beautiful. Uh, again, to reiterate, really appreciate your time. Uh, I've got a really great opportunity that I'm privileged to have. I've only been here for you know, 18 months or whatever it is now to coach the under 16 boys uh, state team who will go away to Perth in July. Uh, I'm always, if you want to come watch camps, trials, whatever, please just let me know. Always uh, open to anybody who wants to come. But really appreciate your time.